Hello, I heard somebody say the other day that if you're charging at a public charger and it costs more than 35p a kilowatt hour, then diesel is cheaper. And I thought to myself, that's not right, but I'm not sure what the break-even figure is. So I thought I'd find out. The only problem is that, of course, you've got miles per gallon with diesel and you've also got the kilowatt hours for electric. So we need to find the common denominator. And I think the solution is pence per mile how much it costs exactly, pence per mile, to drive the car. Then we can find out the break-even figure and know exactly when it is cheaper to drive a diesel car than to go to a public charger. Stick around, we'll try and keep it as simple as possible, not too many facts and figures. Okay. I think it's the only real way to do it, cost per gallon and kilowatt hours. We need a common denominator and I think cost per mile is it. So every week there are changes to the prices of uh, gas and diesel in the UK. Uh, I've checked earlier today and the cost per gallon on average of petrol in the UK is £6.37 and the average cost for diesel is £6.73. Hello, I'm Nigel. Thank you for joining me today hope you can like and subscribe please leave a comment down below i'm also comparing uk prices to the us and i hope you find it interesting and hopefully a bit of fun i'm very pleased to be getting so many views from the us australia canada europe and all over it's great everyone welcome now the average petrol car in the uk does 36 miles per gallon the average diesel does 43 miles per gallon Obviously, some do more and some do less. I stopped relying on the car computer to give me the answers when I had an Audi A3 and I found the really the only accurate way to do it was to fill the car up, drive several hundred miles, fill up again and to check what the miles per gallon is. So it works out that the average petrol car in the UK costs 17.5p a mile and the average diesel costs 15.5p a mile. My Tesla Model 3 does 243 watts per mile, has a 50 kilowatt battery, so I've calculated that charging would have to cost 71p a kilowatt hour for it to cost more than petrol, and it would need to cost more than 63p a kilowatt hour to cost more than diesel. It's interesting that all the oil companies and legacy car makers prices of their public charging are all over this number. They're not dumb and they're trying to put people off buying an EV. But of course most people charge at home and this might just be a top up if you don't have a Tesla. And if you do have a Tesla well it's between 40 and 50p a kilowatt hour well under the cost of some of the rip off very very expensive public chargers. Some of those oil companies and legacy automakers, EV charging, do have discounts for their members, but why do they have to make it so very, very complicated? I don't know why. I give up. Have you ever been to a gas station? get a discount because you pay a monthly subscription i don't think so obviously the cost of charging the price of gas uh, or diesel no matter what the miles per gallon or car is and the cost of charging is not your only consideration when buying an ev up to quite recently second hand prices were almost as expensive as new but that's no longer the case and you can get a decent uh, couple of years old tesla model 3 for about 20,000 less with a few miles on the clock. Uh, now the opponents claim insurance is much higher and they've quoted examples of extremely young people who've got no claims and they're under 21. Yes, it's gonna be expensive. My own insurance hardly went up at all and I've had other people leave messages and said exactly the same. One person, it went up 11 pound. One person saves 11 pounds a day just driving into London it's more, I think it's £15 that you've been charged. It now costs £1.50 because you're not paying the emissions charge. So there's a huge savings, much more 
than the savings on gas. Also depreciation, it's claimed to be much worse for an EV. Well, it wasn't for the first year I owned my Tesla, prices went up. And when I looked online, it told me, well, prices of a car usually go down 25%, maybe more, a third in the first year. In fact, you drive it out of the showroom and it goes down quite a lot. Recently, an EV survey showed that the top 10 most depreciating EVs, none of them were Teslas. Right. But if you're thinking of buying an EV, you're traveling on a motorway and you see some of these prices, you think, oh my goodness me, that's uh, probably dearer than diesel or petrol. You don't know because you haven't worked out the numbers. The only really way you know is to work out the numbers and that's not complicated. So thank you for staying this far. I really do appreciate it. And of course, Tesla superchargers cost between 40 and 50p a kilowatt hour. And that's well under the cost of diesel and even more under the cost of petrol. Now, obviously, the cost of charging at home is the fraction of the price, no matter what the miles per gallon diesel is. As promised, I thought I'd look at prices in the United States. It obviously varies a lot state by state. So I concentrated on California, where I think it was the dearest place to buy gas. Please let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong. But the cars are some of the most efficient in the United States. Now, the average car in California gets 31 miles per gallon. That's a little bit less than in the UK. The cost of gas in California is, on average, $4.88 a gallon, which gives an average cost per mile of 15.7 cents. Now, the average price of a Tesla supercharger is 20 cents a kilowatt hour, which would give a cost per mile of 4.8 cents a mile. So for charging at a public charger in the US to be the same price as gas, you would have to pay 64 cents a kilowatt hour. So 64 cents is the break even number in the United States. If you disagree with these numbers, please let me know. Um, it's more than likely if you're in a different state that it will be different to this, but it'd be interesting to know what your calculations are. So I'm basing this on my Tesla Model 3 that achieves 243 watts per mile over the 20,000 plus miles that I've had it. In the warmer climate, it would probably do better. But then again, a lot of those miles I did in Spain and Portugal, but I was then doing 75 miles an hour. I think I'll do some more of these looking at some other states. I think they're quite interesting. I'm sure there's going to be a big variant. Interesting to know if you come up with any other figures. Also, as well as the other states of America, maybe Australia, Canada, Europe. When I drove uh, in the Tesla to Spain and Portugal, the superchargers were much cheaper than in the UK. And some of the Portuguese public chargers were a fraction of the price at certain times of the day. Now, as I promised earlier, I think it's fun to compare the cost of petrol diesel in the UK to gas in the United States. I stood in a queue many years ago going into Disney World and I was telling a Texan how much we paid for fuel in the UK per gallon. He just didn't believe me. I don't think much has really changed now. No. The average cost for diesel is £6.73 in the UK and would be $8.54 a gallon of gas in the US. So aren't you glad you don't have to pay our prices? We even pay 20% VAT on an electric vehicle. I did. No refunds, no rebates. And people say they want you to get an electric car. I'm subsidising your electric car. I don't think so. But it is interesting, the things you hear on YouTube, like it's a conspiracy going on. The powers to be want you to get everyone in electric cars. I suppose they look at the government, but the government make a huge amount of money, billions and billions on fuel revenue. They don't want to give that up. And if they do, they'll find the money elsewhere. The deadline is not for another 11 years, 2035, when internal combustion cars new will be banned. I think they'll be around for a long, long time, certainly the old ones. It's hardly urgent. And with so much money earned through oil for the government, and also personal wealth of families 
Um, I think the emphasis is definitely not trying to get people into electric vehicles. So I don't know where the conspiracy theories come from. Certainly the environmentalists want to, to see changes and the obnoxious poisonous fumes harming the environment and people. Sure, that makes a lot of sense and it does to me. The oil industry, legacy automakers, dealers are all working to get as much misinformation out there as possible. I just had to get my oil in. I also heard this comment on a YouTube channel this week. He said, my electric car is worthless. Even the dealer doesn't want it back. Funny that he did forget to mention it was a Porsche and every video he does is pretty similar, but he has views of 46,000 people in four hours. And obviously I'm doing something very, very wrong. Maybe if I bought a Porsche Taycan at £120,000, but sadly he says it's only worth now £42,000. Not very good. So the moral of the story is don't buy a Porsche Taycan at three times the cost of a Tesla Model 3, a new one. In fact, six times a good used one. Mind you, I suppose the moral of the story is buy a used Porsche Taycan and round about the price of a new Tesla Model 3, but no, I wouldn't, definitely wouldn't. And someone said to me the other day, the real enjoyment of driving the car, it's so exciting, it's so good, reminds him of when he was 20 driving uh, a Ford Cortina GT. And I know exactly what he means, although I could never afford a Ford Cortina GT when I was his age. But anyway, what do you think? Please leave a comment below. Thank you very much for getting this far. Hope you could like and subscribe and uh, hopefully see you next time. Bye for now.